We're here with Greg Baruch, a real community leader, um, big real estate guy in the area, and uh, a coach of mine back in the day, too. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Was so, sixth grade? Oh, man. It might have been fifth grade. I really? think it was fifth grade, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was me, Pop. Remember Diavion was on that team? Yeah. Diavion, Mike Chris Navage, Reese. Yeah, we had a legendary squad. What was this? What sport? Basketball. Really? Yeah. You still coaching basketball? I do. Yeah. I do. I coach the kids. Yeah? Yeah. How is it? How do you like it right now? <laughs> and who are you coaching? You right? know what? I think coaching would be easier if parents weren't involved. Really? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And you could just coach the kids. You don't yeah. have to worry about getting feedback from the parents. Yeah. Um, it's different, but I still love it. Yeah. So, yeah. I love it. I love watching the kids grow. You yeah. know what I mean? You teach them one thing, a simple, basic yeah. basketball fundamental. And then by the end of the season, you're seeing them, you know, yeah. doing 10 times that. It's, it's yeah. fun. It's rewarding. How long have you been coaching for? So I could probably say... Um, you know what? This goes back to like 2000. I was helping out with the Myers. Actually, it was 2001, I think. I helped out with the Myers varsity team. It was my senior year in college. Cool. So I was born in the year 2000, and <laughs> you coached me. So right. do you think that you noticed a difference between kids back then and then kids now? <laughs> One gazillion percent. <laughs> Absolutely. Really? And how so? Absolutely. It's, I think uh, the respect factor. Mm-hmm was much greater. Uh, I feel like there was more of, I know this is going to sound weird, but more of like an author- authoritarian role as a coach. Yeah. Now as a coach, you're, you're sort of becoming, you're building different relationships with the kids. You're almost like, you're more of like a father role to a lot mm. of these kids or mm. a parent. Um, hearing their everyday stories, yeah. Like yeah. everything they're issuing, and then trying to get the best out of them every day mm-hmm. and, and figuring out what makes them tick to get them going. Yeah. Um, and back in the day, it was like, all right, do this. And they would just do that. You know yeah. what I mean? What do you think changed? Why do you think that that change is taking place? I think society in general is just overall changing. Yeah. Um, social media, I yeah. think, is playing yeah. a huge part in all that. Kids yeah. are growing up a lot faster than they did in the in the good old days. Yeah. I work in the school district now. And um, my job is I work with ES kids, which is emotional support. And so from how I understand it, there used to be a program, ALC, back in the day and the program ALC no longer exists. So now those kids are allocated to different uh, school uh, classrooms really in the district. And I'm one of those classrooms. And so those kids are really, really tough. And I'm trying to get a feel for like how to coach these kids and figure these Mm. kids out and learn how they tick to kind of at least change something along their path. Right. Just be a little part in that trajectory. Yeah. Yeah, I went to school to be a teacher. Mm-hmm. Really? I thought I was going to be a teacher. I love kids, elementary kids. Came down to it. I'm like, yeah, this isn't for me. Mm-hmm. So I had to change my whole uh, career path. Yeah. Well, I think I want to get into something different as well, too. To tell you the truth, for me, there is meaning in it for sure, but it's really just a means for an income. Yeah. That's my ultimate truth. And another part of my truth is my reason for having you on this podcast. And so two podcasts ago, we talked to this kid named Chase Gallagher. And he's 22 years old. And this kid, Chase, started uh, a landscaping company when he was 13 years old. And he's still doing it. And last year, he made $1.7 million at my age. And I was like, fuck, I got to figure some shit out. That's impressive, yeah. I got to figure some shit out. And alongside his landscaping business, he also owns nine rental properties. And he's heavily invested in real estate and just how the game of real estate works. And that's kind of why I wanted to talk to you on this podcast because I feel like you have a lot of value to give in the realm of real estate. So you're also heavily invested in the game of real estate too, correct? Sure. Yep. So what exactly, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. So you you went to school to become a teacher. How did you get yourself into real estate? Man. So you you know the the story, and this actually goes back, uh, if you want to get a job to be a teacher, Mm -hmm. you know, Pay, that whole pay the play nonsense that was going on. Yeah. Pay to play? Yeah, the pay to get a job. No, I don't know how that works. How, oh, there, how did that work? Well, <laughs> people were arrested, thrown in jail. Oh, um, yeah. School yeah. board members were taking bribes in order to mm, hire people. Yeah. yeah. It was a really crazy time. Um, but the long end of it was you needed to know somebody on the school board to sponsor right. you to get you the job. Yeah. For sure. uh, I came out of school. I was substituting in maybe five or six different school districts. Mm. Um, just waiting for that phone call. You yeah. know, I got a uh, long-term subbing job at mm. Westside Tech. 
and I'm teaching high school algebra. Hmm. Now, I haven't taught. Uh, I went to school to be elementary education, right? <laughs> so I haven't had algebra since I was in high yeah. school. Mm-hmm. So I'm relearning this every day. And the kids at West Side Tech, they love their shops, but mm-hmm. they didn't so much love their, you know, their core classes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was a struggle, but, you know, it taught me a lot about teaching. Um, so I kept moving forward trying to become a teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody said, get involved in politics. I started working for a political campaign. Uh, did that. I guess I did a good enough job where um, when when they won the race, I was hired. And I uh, started working for the city of Wilkes-Barre as an aide to the mayor. Interesting. Who was the mayor at the time? Tom Layton. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm 20... And 25, 25 years old, mm. worked for the city, aid, aid to the mayor, part of the administration. Like, definitely, you know, I learned a lot in that job. Yeah, yeah. Um, What does that look like? Like, what's involved in that? So, you would have to represent the mayor at any event that mm. he couldn't be at. Okay. All right? Oh, so wow. So, that's one thing. And yeah. meetings. So, I'm in a meeting with people twice my mm. age. Like yeah. you said to me, you know. Uh, I've been coaching as long as you've been alive. Yeah. Well, that's what these people are saying. I've been working for the city longer than you've been alive. Who are you to tell me what (laughs) to do? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, as long as you had your story straight and you had everything you needed, you know, they'll listen to you. You just have to prove your point. Um, But I got involved. I took that job, and that ultimately was uh, the reason that I walked away from teaching, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, Fun fact, one week before I started my job, Three days after I took it, I got asked to play and travel the country with uh, the Washington Generals, the team that plays the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, and I had to turn it. I turned it down. I'm like, man, I, you know, if it came to me a yeah. month ago, yeah, I could still wow. be a kid, but yeah, I'm Damn. trying to be an adult now. Did you play a lot of basketball when you were younger? I did. Yeah. I did. Was yeah. that like, did you have that typical like young kid mindset? Like, I'm going to grow up. I'm going to go to the league one day. Like, was that your mindset when you were younger? Yeah, I think you need to have that mindset, yeah. right? Because yeah. if you don't have that mindset, you're not going to try and get any better. Mm. That's uh, pretty crazy. Do you think in an alternate reality you would have taken that? Like, do you think you would have wanted to be on the like the receiving end of that Harlem Globetrotter show? No, no. Because nah. that's more acting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be cool to travel the world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really cool to travel the world, but not so much uh, for, like, a career. Yeah. yeah. We actually, we had a Harlem Globe, a Globe Charter on our podcast, and she was telling us about, like, all the crazy stuff that goes into, like, like what they do. And then her experience is traveling the world and what that's like, and it seemed like she has a really good time doing it. Yeah. Keeps you involved, but in many ways, it's like the Harlem Globe Charters is like the WWE of basketball, right? Yeah, it's kind of like, it's a show. It's Mia, a show. Mia Hopkins. Shout out to Mia Hopkins. I think her intention, though, is, is still to... Uh, get her shot with like a WNBA team. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think that's still what she's trying to do. Good for her. All yeah. The props. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter was just at a camp with her, uh, maybe two weeks ago or so. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. She hosts camp camps and stuff like that. Last I spoke to her, I think she was taking a job in Texas okay. as a coach. Yeah. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that transpired. That's all. I love Texas. Yeah. So going from that position of being the aide to the mayor, my fault calling, let me know if that can gets in the way, uh, and being the aide to the mayor, when did you decide that, that was no longer what you wanted to do going forward or what led to you exiting that role? So it was, a, it was, it was like a bunch of different circumstances. Yeah. Um, I started off as the aide and then I sort of made my role what I mm. wanted it to be and stuff that I think, you know, would have been beneficial. Um, I started doing a lot of economic development. Mm. So I w- applied for grants through the city Yeah. and I said, all right, look, I found this grant. I could do this job and this job, you know, I just kept trying to better myself, better my salary, you Mm -hmm. know, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, within a 10 year period, I went from the lowest member of the administration to the city administrator. Wow. um, You know, overseeing a $52 million budget Mm -hmm. and Hmm. 300 employees was pretty wild. But throughout that whole process, uh, I learned so much as far as real estate, economic development, um, management, um, all that stuff. And I think that's really ultimately mm. what led me to where I am. I made a lot of contacts. Yeah. You know, when you're in that field and you're working with all these people, mm. you meet a lot of people. Yeah. That's the one thing I got to tell you, man, it's build those connections. Yeah. Mm. Never burn a bridge. That's what I, that's what I attribute doing this podcast to in a lot of ways is it's almost a hack for networking. Yes, absolutely. Because people want to share their message and also grow their audiences as well. And so, we kind of give people a platform to do that. 
and in return they sit down and answer any question yeah. that we, that we might have. give us free game yeah, free that, knowledge that we might have but it's also beneficial too for people who are listening who are yeah. also interested in whatever field that we're talking about like yeah. if somebody wants to learn about real estate they can look at a video like this yeah. or look at a video like Chase Gallagher and they can get a tre- tremendous amount of value from it which is pretty damn cool um but yeah you're right though networking is very very important that's actually interesting too because I was offered a job by the city of Wilkesbury while I was working as an aide in the district and it was to be an inspector for rental properties, I think. It was something like that, and I turned it down. Really? Yeah, I did turn it down. I feel like you told me about that, but that like kind of like struck me. I feel like I don't remember that. Looking back, I would, probably would have taken it. Really? Taken it, yeah. Well, what all went into it? Do you even know? Uh, they the, What wow. kind of turned me away was they told me that it would get a bit messy because there's a lot of slumlords in our area mm. who are trying to kind of just pass inspection or get right yeah. under the inspection thing, and so I guess it's quite confrontational and at the point at that time in my job i was like nah i'm not really interested in so something like that would you just be like inspecting like i guess the value of a property is that what you would no, have been doing no what do you Ready? think that's about ready yeah. i'll tell you everything about it okay I, <laughs> we might have written actually this ordinance came up when i was working for the city all right um because we just had so many people moving into the city of wilkesbury yeah uh we didn't know who was who mm. and drugs were getting out of hand it was just getting out of control yeah. and we couldn't even figure out who the owners of some of these properties yeah. were so we, we wrote this ordinance requiring um, apartments to get inspections, you know, for us to get eyes on and make sure they're, yeah. they're safe. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be a fire hazard or yeah. whatnot. Um, and they have the essentials, hot water, heat, uh, and a cooking uh, okay. uh, oven. So, uh, and that's all you really do. But you go in and you see some not so nice things. Yeah, so. some pretty crazy conditions. Yeah, so like back to my time with the city, one of my roles that I got into was called um, the community action team. So we would go out there, it would be uh, myself as a member of the administration and police chief, fire chief, Mm. uh, inspector, rental inspector, and we'd get a list of problem properties, whether from like council meetings or people calling the mayor and complaining, Mm. uh, or even tips from like crime watch meetings. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we would knock on doors and (laughs) try talking to people. It's wild stuff. Like, I mean, some of the stories, like there was Mm. a time and a pit bull just came out of a closet and he jumped on me. Right? Oh my Three God. Three people pulled their guns out and I'm like, whoa, guys, just relax. Damn. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Dog wow. went running off. Everything's fine. He just wanted to play. That's- <laughs> wow. Yeah, some scary shit. A lot that goes into that. I'm sure you see a whole lot of stuff. Man. Yeah. A whole lot of stuff. But that is ultimately what got me into um, real estate. Yeah. That was my transition, right? Mm. That was the big time. So I'm seeing all these bad properties. Yeah. But I'm also seeing the amount of money people are making on these. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it was crazy. And, uh, one of these hits that we did, it was because the owner of a property called us an older person and, uh, had a really bad tenant and thought they were doing drugs yeah. and never let him in. So we called us, we go and check on it. Um, ultimately we closed the place down. It wasn't livable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, he said, you know, I just want to get rid of this apartment. Mm. That's uh, where you step in, huh? Yeah. I go, what do you mean? You want to get rid of it? Yeah. <laughs> what are you looking to get? Right. So next thing you know, I got two other people that were handy. I figured, all right, I'll do the like the number yeah. side and I'll do the labor. Mm. Uh, give me an electrician and a carpenter. Yeah. Right. So I asked two of my buddies. And we bought our first property together. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's wow. actually pretty crazy. I guess like, well, I'm like very inexperienced in the in the realm of real estate. One of the things I was always curious about is what happened to houses that were deemed like condemned, for example. Unlivable, right? Yeah, unlivable houses. Because yeah. like we've had like those conversations of like stumbling across houses we might have been interested mm-hmm. in and then you find out they're condemned. So like how does, like what's that process like? How do you go about buying one of those houses and like what needs to take place in order for like something like that to go through? Right. Like, how much so, would they cost? There, there's like a little bit of a misinterpretation when you hear condemned, yeah. right? The city goes in, they put this big sticker on a house, mm-hmm. like a big yellow sticker, right? Mm-hmm. Usually that means uninhabitable. Right. Uh, so that could mean something as simple as the electricity is not on. Mm. Interesting. Or uh, they don't have uh, the proper smoke detectors or the sewer lines yeah. broken. That's all that means. Mm. Um, if a property is legitimately condemned, which yeah. means it's unsafe. Yeah. And at risk of causing harm. Yeah. Uh, if you 
you know, the bank would always sell it. Anybody yeah. would sell it, but you'd probably have to, the city would come in. It's called a buyer notification inspection. Mm. They come in and they tell you what needs to be done to this property in order for it to change hands. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So in order to make it habitable. Yeah. Then a sale can't happen as long as it's technically condemned by the city then, correct? correct? Interesting. Okay. So then you bought this property with your buddy. Did you guys split it? Did you guys go in on it together? Yeah, we, we came down with the down po- uh, Yeah, the deposit on it. And then I, I pulled the mortgage myself. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And so then did you guys treat that as like a flip opportunity or did you guys try to rent it? So <laughs> it's a little wild, right? And how did it transpire? Uh, did it end up being a good, uh, like, did it, did it work out in your favor or did it actually get a little messy? <laughs> How long is this podcast? As long as you want <laughs> yeah. it. To All right, ready? Yeah. It's a wild story. So it was a double block. It was your typical side by side. Sure. Three bedroom, one bath on yeah. each side. Uh, we uh, one lady lived in it since 1965. Oh my goodness. Mm. She okay. lived through the flood in the house. Mm. Her rent was 275 dollars a month. Since 1960. Since probably since yeah. she fixed it up after yeah. the flood. Yeah. Uh, so I couldn't raise a rent. Mm. I just didn't have it in me. Yeah. I didn't have the heart. Yeah. Um, but then on the other side, I was renting, getting like six fifty a month. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it was paying its bills, mm-hmm. $40,000 mm-hmm. property. You don't have much of a mortgage on it. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're making money. Um, but then, you know, the turnover, the one side would always turn over and the old yeah. lady would always still be there. And, you know, she was great. She never had a problem, never called me with an issue, nothing. Um, and I'm going through different tenants. I probably had three or four different tenants on the other side. I owned it probably around like eight years. Mm-hmm. Lady still lived there when I decided to sell it. Yeah. Um, and and I, I sold her right when I got my real estate license. And uh, the deal I made with the guy mm. is you could do whatever you want. You cannot raise this woman's rent. Her really? rent was up to 285 now. Yeah. Okay. So you got her up I got her up $10. Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't easy. The tears. And it was like, God yeah. bless her soul. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. was a sweet lady. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it was costing me more to have her in there. It yeah. was like I had another kid. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Um, so I get this guy and it wasn't your regular deal, right? Mm-hmm. The market wasn't that hot back then. Mm-hmm. And he agrees to lease to own. Lease to own, which means he's, which means basically he's going to pay me rent every month until and, he... and a little bit above uh-huh. that value. And I'm going to take that off the overall price. Got it. Until he can either get a loan and pay me off completely or, mm. you know, I turn into the bank basically mm-hmm. and yeah. collect the money off it. Yeah. Uh, he was there for a year. Mm-hmm. It was great. Always getting, getting my money. And I'm, I'm like, oh, this is great. I paid 40000 I'm making yeah. this back in like two years off this guy. Yeah. yeah. Until uh, I was around Christmas time. I'm watching the news, the 11 o'clock news. Oh, boy. Gets arrested for uh, attempted murder. Oh. In Scranton. Great. That's good. And so then, that's kind of lucky for you, though, right? I mean, that kind of worked out. Well, then, man, <laughs> his rent's gone now, so man, he's no longer getting well, income. Well, no, that's just the crazy thing. He had four tenants in the one side. He had four, oh, four so bedrooms. He was, he was yeah. collecting rents, and I'm thinking, now this guy's in jail. Where am I going? Oh, yeah. Right. So yeah. I went back over there. None of these guys have ever seen me. Yeah. I knock on the door, and thank God I knew one of the tenants. Mm. Yeah. I went to high school. He was a, he went to JR back in the day, but yeah. we remembered each other. And this guy was renting rooms. 500 bucks per bedroom. He was bringing in $2,000 a month off the one side of the property. Oh my God. Well, the other side was only doing 285. Yeah. That's wow. crazy. Is it like, is it bittersweet letting go of like that first property that you purchased given like where you are now in the real estate game? I mean, I don't, I, I, I'm not too big into the real estate as far as specific investments yeah. anymore. Um, I learned my lesson from that one. Number one is I'm not, cut out to be a landlord and too nice of a guy. Mm. Um, you got to be cutthroat a little bit, huh? You do. A, yeah. You do. Yeah. You really have to, and you can't put up with any nonsense. Yeah. And yeah. I'm very easy going. Like yeah. it takes a lot to get me pissed yeah. off. Yeah. And uh, like, I just wasn't having the stress. Mm. That's interesting. I mean, I guess that comes with getting to understand who you are and knowing yourself. Right. 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 Yeah. It's all part of learning. Right. Yeah. That's really, really interesting. So I see so around the same time, you're also getting your real estate license to become a, a realtor then. Correct. So this is right around uh, after 12 years being in, so this goes back, actually, it's almost nine years ago that I've had my real estate license. Um, there was a change in administration. Okay. And at the top spot of the mayor, your spot's, you know, most likely to go because, you know, you're an administrator, number one guy for an old mayor. Now a new mayor comes in. Yeah. 
I mean, so I didn't know what my future was going to be. I didn't know if I was going to keep a job, what yeah. was going to happen. Uh, so I figured I'll just, you know, start making moves. Yeah. Uh, so I, I went to uh, a real estate class. It was like every Tuesday and Thursday mm-hmm. for four or five hours. Del Grotto? Yeah, he's the, ah, the man. man. That's where you went, right? The man of myth. Yes, sir. Yeah. And how old were you at the time of that? So like nine years ago, 34. Okay. So did you have, like, prior to exiting from the political game did you have a game plan as to what you wanted to do or did you have any inclination at all that like you were going to get into real estate prior i did okay yeah no um like know that project on cool street dicerama the pain yeah yeah the, the, um, uh screen of penguins yes facility, oh yeah yeah right so when the penguins got big yeah hockey came back to wilkes hmm. right hmm. that place was a shithole and yeah, it was run a down point, and it right? was closed down. It was a, it was nothing but a yeah. mess. So uh, that's really when I started learning like the development side of real estate. Yeah. Right? And that's when I started really liking, oh, but there's grant writing. You've got to write grants. You go out through this. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm learning like, all right, if you like your return on your investment, all this, mm. all this knowledge. Um, and I fell in love with that. Yeah. So. I'm still working for the city. I'm doing my real estate class. Yeah. Uh, then I got hit. I got hit up by one of these investors, and he said, mm. "Listen, I need a real estate guy. I need a guy that can go after and help me with things." I ended up working for him as a consultant for three years, mm. while I had my real estate license on the side doing my thing. Yeah. Um, for instance, like the Market Street project. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. So that was like. That Market was like Street. one of our first projects. So the old train station. Yeah. Oh it, yes, 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 yes. Now that's great office space. Loop Internet's yeah. in there. Yeah, that's interesting because you know what? Loop Internet just decided to sponsor uh, Bill Corcoran's new studio space, which is crazy. Yeah, Chris, awesome. Chris is a great guy. Local, local kid, man. You know him? They're yeah, killing it. Absolutely. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I, I see them all top. over. Isn't that? Are they? They're local. They're local guys. They're yeah, from like around here. Yeah. Mm, Young, makes sense. Too. Yeah, I mean, I see them all over. Like virtually every day I'm out driving, I see a loop internet van somewhere wiring something to a pole somewhere. So like the end, that's awesome. It's very recent. Like you I might just be a cool guy to talk to. Um, we might not be able to speak about this too much on the pod. Let me know what you think, but wasn't that project, uh, didn't Greco kind of have some involvement in that project as well? He owned it. Did he still own it or not? He, so is it fuzzy? Cause we could just get out. It's if, a, yeah. If we, why don't we get out? It yeah. was under litigation. Okay. It was, yeah. it, was, it was a bunch of headaches, but long yeah. story short, it was this rundown nightclub that turned into a beautiful asset. It looks the great. city yeah. to the County. Yeah. Luzerne County has their uh, visitor center in there now. Yeah. We were in there uh-huh. when we were like, how young were we when yeah. we were in that building? When we were kids, we used to explore oh, like course. abandoned buildings. Well, yeah. There was a, a body found in there, maybe like yeah. right before we started our work. Oh, and God. what's crazy? I know the kids who found it. Really? Oh, what's God. crazy about that? <laughs> it's like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, we did that very often, and that like that's one of the the memories that always stick out very fond in my head because I remember either I don't know if I seen something or if I heard something, but like I was like even to this day, I'm like ninety percent sure somebody was in there in that building with us, and it was just like me, you, and Brian, right? Mm, uh, I don't remember. Might have been somebody else there, yeah. but I remember that. Like I remember either hearing something or seeing something, and then we ended up just getting out of there. But that was a big part of our childhood. We would always do stuff like that. So I wonder, like, of it's it's actually funny. I didn't even think about that prior to this pod, but I wonder how many buildings that like we went into that you are in some way involved with now. Yeah, we broke into a lot of buildings. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't break into a lot of buildings, <laughs> and we were young. So. Doors were left open. Right? <laughs> yeah. Explore. It's part of yeah. being a kid. Yeah, the yeah. window was left open for sure. But yeah, no, that was a crazy time. So what uh, w- what was that project that you were getting into oh, with the train station? Yeah. So it ended up being this huge project with the books for Grand and Penguins, making it a practice facility. Yeah. Um, all the park, all the, the playgrounds are new. And you talk a playground, yeah. like you're talking close to a million dollars just for play equipment. Yeah. And like mm. the setup and everything, like the numbers are crazy mm. what it costs to do these things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just learning all the, the way that works, like all the uh, heating and air conditioning, yeah, electrical, yeah. you're looking at all these, these union guys out here working and you're le- learning the numbers they're making, yeah. uh, mm. federal prevailing wage rates, like things you never even heard of and yeah. you're learning. Yeah. Like that, that was great to me. And I, that's what really mm. turned me into, you know, love and real yeah. estate. How hard was it to learn? Like some of those things. I think I'm still very like young and immature in many ways. And when a lot of like these things come up, like, my brain does not know how to interpret like some of these terms that you hear thrown around in like business. Like a lot of the things you were just saying with like 
I don't know. It's just like a lot of it doesn't set into me. So was this stuff like you really cared about at the time you were getting into it? No, I didn't. I didn't. And I would hear the same things and yeah. be thinking just like you, like, shit, what does that mean? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I'd write it down or I'd put it in my Blackberry yeah. back in the day mm-hmm. and then go back and research yeah. it and see what it is or what it was. That's yeah. like kind of how I am. Like I'll have to like, I'll hear something that like sounds interesting to me and I'll have to like throw it in my phone and like go research it in my sure. alone time or it'll just never set in for me. Yeah, that's kind of the phase that I'm in right now. Like, you ever heard of a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Sure. Yeah, I'm actually just reading that now. And uh, he talks a lot about financial literacy and trying to get uh, understanding for how money moves and how it kind of flows throughout markets and stuff like that. And so that sounds to me like exactly what you're talking about. Like, you're learning how money's being transferred through a lot of these projects and how a bunch of people are making money. Yeah. And how, you know, money's flowing and and coming in it's really just a crazy thing to think about. Yo, it, it's wild. I watch, I mean, I never thought I'd be the guy that wakes up and has CNN on. Yeah. I'm like watching the news, just seeing what's happening because yeah. there are things that happen in the overall world that yeah. ultimately affect yeah. something in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It really is crazy. So when you were starting out as a realtor, were you just doing residential stuff or were you immediately getting yourself into like commercial type of properties? So when I first got my license, I was immediately thrown into commercial Interesting. Uh, and I didn't know much about it. I yeah. was learning on the run. Uh, the gentleman I told you that picked me up as a consultant, um, he was teaching me a lot also as mm. we were going, which mm. was very helpful. It's always, always having someone like a role model. Yeah. A so a mentor is so important, mm-hmm. so important to everybody. Um, and he really showed me the ropes on how, you know, you're calculating, see if this is a good investment and what's not. Uh, you know, when you take the real estate class, you just learn the basics yeah, uh, and things that you never think you're going to learn. Mm-hmm. And 99% of that job of real estate is personality and just talking and relating to people. Yeah. Really? You know, that's 100%. another, that's another thing that I was, um, that I was interested in talking to you about. So at some point you have to, you have to develop almost like a, a, a skill of sales, right? Sure. And like selling yourself in a lot of ways. So is that something you think you've always had or is that something that you've had to acquire as you're getting into the game of business? Yeah, it's definitely something you acquire. Really? Right? 100%. Because you seem like a lot of people, like a charismatic guy. And I feel a lot of times, like people tell me I'm charismatic, but like I'm wondering, could people acquire that type of skill, you know? Yeah, you know, I, I think so. Mm-hmm. And usually you acquire that through knowledge, mm. right? The more comfortable you, you are about talking yeah. about a topic, you know, the better you come across, yeah, more you know, understanding you are. If you don't know what you're talking about, then people won't take you as seriously. So, sure. Right? So and you, you trust me, there have been times I'm dealing with somebody and you're talking about a multi-million dollar deal and they ask you a question and you're stumped. Yeah. Hmm. And, you know, same thing they always used to teach in real estate school. Listen, I don't know the answer right now, but I'm going to get you the answer. Yeah. And the key is always to follow back up with those people. Yeah. That's really, really interesting. And so is there a real big difference bet- or what, how do you perceive the difference between uh, residential real estate and commercial real estate? So residential is always your work. Depends if you're working with an investor or if you're just working with a single family trying to buy a house, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So if it was a single family trying to buy a house, you know, first you talk to them, what are your needs? Mm-hmm. Oh, three bedroom, two bath. Right. I want to be in this school district, whatnot. Right. And you sort of just work your search based on that. Right. Um, you know, you show them a couple of houses, you get their, their feel, you learn their personality. Yeah. And then maybe you realize based on everything they're saying, they're com- looking in the completely wrong area, mm. you know, and they're like <clears throat> moving somewhere else. Like I've had, I've had clients that I see, actually, I think they're at the end of the street, mm. uh, right by the trestle and they were looking in the Heights and they had their kids and they were talking about riding their bikes. And I'm like, guys, this isn't a street to ride your bikes on, mm. but I know a great, you know, down the street where if you want want to be able to ride the, your bikes free yeah. and not worry about your kids. I got a place for you. Hmm. Um, and then commercial. The commercial is, it's all about the numbers. Yeah. Really? 100%. So you're no longer working with people who, you know, they're looking for their family kind of. You're, yeah. You're working strictly with business people. At it's, that yeah, point. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's more 100% business. business and it's, it's a matter of learning the language. Yeah. So How, what was it like getting into that realm? Like, was that something you were prepared for? Dealing no, with those kinds no. of people? No, I wasn't. And, you know, I, I'm still learning today. Yeah. I'm still learning. I was on the phone with another agent. And he was throwing yeah. these terms out. Yeah. I'm like, shit. Hmm. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this? How am I going to? All right. I'll figure it out. Yeah. I have a very hard time with the art of business. Like, business in a lot of ways, like, terrifies me. It's like a sport. 
Yes. It is. It is just like a sport. But I think like you said before, it's like something you can, it's a skill that you can definitely get better at. But for me, it's not like I can't make it like my sole focus. I feel like in many ways, business corrupts a lot of people. And I could definitely see how that would like not necessarily happen to me, but I could see how the art of business could like jade your actual vision or like what you're trying to do. Maybe so like, take, it could uh, possibly take you away from your values and like yeah. core traditions in a lot of ways yeah. too, because then greed sets in, in a lot mm. of ways and people are making money. People are mm. losing money. Mm. So I see what you're saying by that. For sure. But it's a balance. Like we always talk about like, I, I have a love for being a creator. Like I love creating videos, whatever, but business is just like an aspect that you have to at least know your 10% of, I think to like, make what you actually want to do work. You need to have an element of being able to switch that hat on business mode to get things done. Cause in some way you need to get paid to level up your game of what you're trying to do. Like with this, you sure. would have to put the business hat on. Yeah. It's interesting it's though. A it's a balance. It is right. Just like yeah. everybody always says your career and your family. Yeah. yeah. It's a constant balance. Mm. So, um, hold on. I just completely whew, zap. All right. We're back. So after that, first big project you had it was the you said the pen penguins and it was a practice facility what's for scranton penguins yeah okay so hockey team. what followed that that was your first that was your intro your step through the door first of all how did that work like what was the process like did it work out well smoothly or was it like was there some uh what were the misconceptions of your first time getting into commercial real estate yeah. so Back to the the uh, the ice skating rink. Yeah. Um, misconceptions on there. I just mm. didn't understand the complexity. Really. I was so simple minded when it came down to it. Yeah. Um, that was probably the number one issue. And and when you're dealing with government, yeah. which I was working for, yeah. you have a lot of critics. Yeah. You have a lot of people that like to voice their opinion, whether it's on a keypad or yeah. at council meetings, and yeah. uh, that was tough. But uh, that whole penguin thing was full circle for me. Mm. Um. I moved here in 1990 from Pittsburgh. I was 10 years old. I was in fourth grade. Mm. And uh, my father was into economic development. Mm. He, my parents met in Pittsburgh, so we lived in Pittsburgh. Uh, my dad was originally from Wilkes-Barre. Yeah. He graduated Myers High School. Mm. Um, and he got hired to take over the Chamber of Commerce. Mm. Okay. Now, the Chamber, of, Chamber Commerce of Commerce is like an economic yeah. development yeah, yeah. entity and, you know, pushing forth the business agenda yeah. of, you know, what they need. And uh, he brought the idea of the arena. That used to be all mine-scarred land up by the arena right yeah. off the exit. Mine-scarred land. That's interesting. There was nothing there at all. There really wasn't even a Walmart. Wow. Like, wow. Kingsfields were there. That was that, yeah. Everything ended where those Kingsfields were. And wow. it's crazy because that's, like, one of the biggest areas in our entire city now in terms of, like, the well, economy, uh, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's so, like what we were right, just talking look about at the earlier. growth. Look at the growth. Look at the tax revenue from all those retail stains. Yeah. It's sustainable growth for a government. You know, that's interesting because I never really look at the world from that perspective at all. You know? So being a person who's in the, who's kind of responsible for the development of the economy of Wilkes-Barre, you're, you're seeing these plots of lands and then you're helping to develop them into like, well, first they're like they're building commercial uh, like spaces, right? And then you have to kind of get companies to come in and, and conduct business in these places, right? To then stimulate the economy and, and, and then grow, you know, Wilkes-Barre as a city. The tax base. Yeah. That's the idea. That's 100% the idea. That's really, really interesting. Development. That's a driver. Wow. You know, I see Mayor Brown's doing a lot of stuff. Like he's trying to make a pretty big push. We had him on our podcast actually, and he said, and I quote, that he was looking to make Wilkes-Barre the entrepreneurship capital of Pennsylvania. Mm. And I think that's really, really interesting because he's also employed the, what's called a spark program as well. Right. So, um, so people who are looking to start their own businesses can get into a commercial space. And I think the idea is that the program will fund, um, the rent, I guess, for your business for like the first year, yeah. which is pretty wild. Yeah. We got, uh, we put, Three, I put three different individuals uh, in downtown retail locations, uh, new businesses, two wow. are new businesses. Uh, the third is um, one that's coming from a different mm. location out wow. of Wilkes-Barre, into Wilkes-Barre. And yeah, they're covering, it's a great program. Yeah. It's Can, an awesome program. Um, and I, we just need more, more people yeah. out there, you know, 
taking us up on it. We're, we try and advertise. Sure. It. We try and get the word out there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, Mayor Brown's vision on that is great. It's really, really it's cool. Wonderful. And so you still have involvement then in the development of the economy of Wilkes-Barre? Yeah, indirectly. Yeah. Absolutely. Indirectly, absolutely. That's really, you really know, interesting. You, you, you talk to some investors and you might look at a building, you might not think anything of it, but there's yeah. 30 apartments in there and it's valued over $5 million. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. If it was an old school that was then converted. So you went from Myers High School. Yeah. You yeah. Have Myers yeah. High School. Got to get into that for yes. sure. Yeah. I mean, is this, unless you, I don't know if you want to transition this now or not, but that was taken $0. It was seven acres in oh prime Wooksbear. Yeah location yeah we don't have land to develop in wilkes anymore no. it's gone That's there's nothing there right yeah so this seven acres was bringing in zero dollars yeah. in tax revenue and now you're looking at a project close to you know 20 million dollars which is going to generate uh you know even if their assessments around five million dollars it's going to generate a lot of tax revenue that's fascinating. Just on the just on the property taxes, but then they also get their cut out of if you're employed and you're right. in the city, you get paid yeah. more taxes. That's boosting you know, the economy. Boosts the economy, it keeps our taxes in line. So it seems then that you still kind of have a passion for this thing, for the development of the city of Wilkesbury. One hundred percent. That's really really interesting because like I definitely have a passion for that as well because I always felt you know what's funny is like a lot of people will always say, especially kids my age, that I got to get out of Wilkesbury. Wilkesbury sucks. There's nothing to do here. But it's like you're part of the problem. You know what I mean? Like, let's create something to do here. This place actually has a lot of potential. I think I read at one point that Wilkes-Barre had like 50,000 people living here and it was like the place to be. And it was booming at one point. Um, so for a person who still has a passion kind of for that realm, how do you think wilkes can still be developed? And then what do you think is the potential still going forward for the city of wilkes Because there's oh, still a lot of stuff yeah. that can be done yeah, from, so from agreed, my perspective, right? You know? So after COVID hit, the economy went went in the shitter. Tanked, mm-hmm. yeah, for right. Sure. Office space not really used for office space. Yeah, what's the greatest use for that? You convert it into residential living units. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So and that's what's happened. There's uh, three of the main banks that used to anchor our downtown mm-hmm. are now converted into apartments, and there are really? people paying close to two thousand dollars a month to live in downtown Wilkesbury. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I you're paying you're just as to. much to live in Wilkesbury as you are in Florida to overlook That's crazy. You know, some water. It's That's wild. crazy. Yeah, that is nuts. So what do you think about that? Because there's a lot of I was I wanted to get into that as well. Like there's a lot of buildings in downtown Wilkesbury that are still super undeveloped, yeah. that are just vacant. They're just shells in a lot of ways. Some are. Yeah. Some aren't. There's I mean, you name them and I could probably tell you what's going on with them if there's something going on with so them. So there's the bank, right? That's right on the corner. I think it's across from Bide Coffee Shop, right? The you said across from a bod? Yeah. Oh, so yeah, the big bank. The first uh, floor. And it has the glass, the glass uh look in, right? You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, I was talking to the owner of that building today. Really? Yeah. The owner of the building? Yeah. So one guy owns that big ass building? Yeah. Oh my god. He owns That's a lot nuts. of buildings. Really? <laughs> he bought the old Coughlin High School also. Really? Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So so the, wait, so before we go too far, so there's that building and then there's the one right where the Bonton is. Big, huge, tall building. It might be the tallest building in Wilkes-Barre. The Bonton. Wait, yeah, which one? It's across from about? the Bonton, and it's on a one way. You mean Boscov's. Oh, Boscov's. Yeah, yeah. How do you get Boscov's? <laughs> the Bonton. I never I thought there. you were talking about the mall. <laughs> I treat that place like an old, an old lady shop. No offense, but yeah. Anyway. Boscov's. That, there's that building, So too. that was uh, Rosen and Jenkins building. It used to be a law firm. That is that currently tall under building? construction. Really? So the plan it, is to convert it then to They're all apartments. Really? First floor retail. Above that, oh, all I know. apartments. I actually, I now I know what video or building you're talking about. That was the one they just put all new windows in there recently, yes. right? Yeah. Is it a yeah, brick building? The is the building really? Yeah. So there's that, and then there's um, the strip kind of where I don't know what street it is. Where is it the King's, one with Boss or King's College is on it? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not uh, King's College. It's it's Wilkes University. It's like Wilkes shop. There's a police station here, and then uh, the end is like Dunkin' Donuts, I think. No, no, no. The movie theaters is on the corner. South Main. Is it South Main? That's the street I was thinking of. Like the uh, there's a couple different ha- like a buildings there that seem like they're vacant as well. Yeah, maybe there's a couple. Yeah. Um, but like for for instance, the uh, the bank building, the first floor is like twenty thousand square feet yeah. of space. Wow. Just need a very specific user, right? It was a bank that used to be in there, and it hasn't oh. been anything since the bank. Right. Um, the buildings. He's killing it as far as rents and it's yeah. mixed use. He has an office on a couple floors too. Um, he's just waiting to find the right tenant. Really? Yeah. GG Podcast? <laughs> we're, we're trying to That's get a it. podcast studio. 
Like that's not in my house. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Because it would be a lot. We know better. some people. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah let's yeah. talk. That's actually something that we kind of wanted to bring up on this pod. So if we were like interested, he and I, in buying a piece of commercial real estate to like have a podcast studio or a warehouse or anything like that going forward in this area, what would you recommend or what path would you recommend we take? I would tell you the rent first. Just the rent? Well, just I would tell the you, Spark your, program is not Yeah. I would tell you your first move is the rent. Okay. Use the Spark program. You're a startup mm. business. You know, yeah. learn the ropes first. Mm. I mean, if you went in and you went and bought, you know, a two hundred thousand yeah. dollar property just from yeah. the studio, look at your overhead. Yeah. yeah. You know, you gotta figure out ways that you could, you know, uh produce revenue. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd probably be it'd be a great idea for you guys. I got some great spaces. All right. Yeah. Let's, we can talk. Let's, let's talk. talk. <laughs> let's talk. Um Wait, what was I going to say? Some there? used to be studios like this. Studio. Really? Yeah. That's, that's really, interesting. Really interesting. I feel like our area really has nothing like what we're trying to do. Oh. And that, huh? I know what I wanted to say next. Okay. What were we saying? No, I, I think you're about to say what I was going um, to say. I don't think so. But <laughs> that one building on um, oh, River yeah, Street, yeah. the Diamond. Yes. Didn't you have some involvement in kind of closing that deal as well? And then there's like land right next to it that needs to be developed. And those, so there's some things going on there too, right? There is. There is. So, uh, Long time ago, we brought in a group uh, when I worked for the city of Wilkes-Barre. Uh, a gentleman came in. He wanted to invest in Wilkes-Barre. He was from Kosovo. Where's that? Yeah, I've never heard. <laughs> Over in Europe. Oh, Aren't really? Aren't you guys geography guys? I've no, been, I mean, we're travelers, but no, I've never, I've never heard of this. Kosovo? Is it a country? It is. Kosovo? Listen, I don't start asking me too many questions. <laughs> Colin, can, you look, can you look that up, please? <laughs> Kosovo? <laughs> Kosovo. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I've yeah never it's heard. not far. I mean, you're not you're not too far from Italy and all that over there. Cool. But uh, this guy bought an old, he bought an old school building, or he wanted to buy a building in downtown. It was actually across from that bank building. Okay. It was uh, the vault. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. it was the vault, it was it was a bank. Yeah. And then it was a post office building. That place is awesome, by the way. Yeah. yeah I've, I've never been. I've, I've always I've, wanted to go there. I've eaten there and I ate inside the the bank vault. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. What? Well, go ahead. Right above uh, Greece. Come on, interesting. Buddy. Yeah. You should have known that. There yeah. you go. I've been to Greece. Have you? Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Well, I'm, good for you. Yeah, it's so cool. That's awesome. So cool. I backpacked though. What's your favorite Greece. part about it? I went to Athens. That was the only place I've been to in Greece was Athens. And um, probably the little back roads where you like there's just people living there and it just seems very uh I don't know. It's just like seems very historical there. Like you could tell there's a lot of history there. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Very nice. different. Yeah. Got some crazy ones coming up too. Wait, what were we before we get too lost? What were we saying? The guy from Kosovo, he came to oh, downtown. Anyway, Wilkes-Barre, so yeah. he came to Wilkesbury. He wanted to invest. Interesting. Uh, when I was work for the city in terms yeah. of the development side, I met him. I was out in Philadelphia for a meeting. I mm. reached out to him. We met him. We had dinner. Next thing you know, he buys that building. He buys another building. The annex he bought. It was another person from his home community that bought the annex. Oh, wow. He I has see. brought over probably close to like fifty. Migrants from Kosovo. Yeah. Uh, to run his restaurants. Huh. To he gives them jobs. He he buys properties. Like, how do they discover Wilkesbury though? Like of all places, like when you're, I guess, looking at the the greater scheme. Like, how do they land here? I always wonder that for people that weren't born in Wilkesbury. Like, how they choose this? How area. do you find this place, right? How do you find Wilkesbury? Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah, good point. No, I don't know. But especially for I mean, like a, a savage like that who's looking to like buy a bunch of commercial real estate. Like, what makes you decide? Like. I guess, like, what is the insurance that, like, this is the successful place to move? Like, because in my mind, again, I don't really understand the game much, but, like, it seems like elsewhere would be just better overall in terms of your investment and the uh, the insurance that it works out for you. I mean, everyone's open to you yeah. know, you're, your own opinion with that. Well, again, I, I'm uh, like... Right? But I, I feel like it's whatever you make of it. Yes, that's fair. But like I said, like, I, I want to so, preface that. Like, I'm oh, I'm yeah, completely yeah. unknowledgeable. So, like, say a guy from New York wants to come invest in Wilkesbury, yeah. Pennsylvania... This guy in New York's paying crazy numbers. Yeah. You know, a million dollars for a three bedroom unit. Yeah. yeah. They come to Wilkesburg and it's, back in the day it was like ninety thousand yeah. dollars or whatever. And they're like, wow, the potential's here. That's what ultimately yeah. boosted our economy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And our and our taxes. I mean, look at these properties in Wilkesburg. Yeah. I mean, they went from going forty, fifty thousand yeah. dollars when I first started selling real estate here. Now you're I, I sold a home over $200,000 that never in a million years that I think the values would be that high. Yeah. So, wow, we're in like a... We're uh, all over the place. We're in a, Yeah, we are. I'm trying to, I'm trying to I'm tighten sorry. this back up. So, we're in like a stage of development, though, in the city of Wilkes-Barre. There's, I think there's so. a lot still kind of happening. I think so. Um, 
we're in a growth stage right now. I feel building. I feel that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, but the economy is doing everything it can to to try and prevent this from happening. Mm. Yeah. Um, inflation. Yeah. Doesn't help. No. Yeah. Interest rates. They don't help. Mm. And those are all things that you don't really think of until you get in the nitty gritty of development. Yeah. Right. Like put things into perspective. You're going to buy a hundred thousand dollar home five years ago. You got not even five, three years ago, you got a 4% interest rate. Right. That hundred thousand dollar payment with mm. a 4% interest rate, it's like $570 a month. Right. Yeah. You know what it is now with an 8% interest rate? It's like $870 a month. Oh my God. It's a different number. How do you backtrack? Like how do you correct what is currently happening in that market and the economy, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a question for the president, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, I think again, they're trying to figure it out by raising yeah. the rates to slow things yeah. down. But when you slow things down, projects stall, right? Yeah. And this is going to lead us into that empty lot next to the diamond, the diamond building. Uh, mm. That was at hotel Sterling, this old yep. hotel yeah. Sterling where yep. presidents used to come. That was, I heard Michael Jackson stayed there once upon a time. Come really? On. That's what I heard. That's the rumor. I That's haven't heard that, but you never know. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Um, so, yeah. So, what's going on with those two projects there? Or, so, yeah. that hotel project, uh, it's one that uh, we partnered with the owner from, uh, the guy from Kosovo. Mm. Uh, my father, myself, and him, we have a partnership on the property. Um, he's the lead, and, you know, we're just along trying to make this a reality. I mean, we're the boots on the ground doing, yeah. you know, figuring everything out. Um before COVID, we presented this project, a 108-room hotel, yeah. uh, eight condos, nice wedding reception, balconies uh-huh. overlooking the river. Like, And this is that corner lot that's yet to be developed, right? Yeah. It's okay. a shame. You guys are too young for it. I mean, that building. Sterling. I, I remember yeah, there being was, a building there, me too. though. Yeah, I yeah. remember it was there. Yeah. I, was a, I remember I was, a, I was 16 years old, and that place was condemned. Well, part of it was condemned. And uh, I had a classmate who lived in it. Mm. They turned into apartments. Wow. We wow. used to hang out there all the time. That's that w- really interesting. That yeah, was another that was one cool. we were in, right? Yeah, we broke into the annex before it was all rented. Hey, oh, yeah. we didn't yeah. break in there. I actually <laughs> I wish we did break in, 100%. <laughs> we, we broke the fuck in there, like <laughs> smashed it. Okay. Uh, you know what's funny about that, actually? I wish Brian was here to tell the story, but I fell through the floor at that place. Yeah, like I was trying to climb across ah, the Ah, yeah, I remember that. I wasn't there. Huh? The top floor? No, I think I, I felt it was the second floor, but then before I fell through, I kind of caught myself, and then I did a dip and caught my way back. <laughs> so, <laughs> didn't die, didn't break anything, <laughs> survived. Um, wait, so to backtrack a little bit, you're actually involved in the the development of that land and building that hotel? Yeah. You're one of the co-owners of it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah, wow. that is awesome. That's crazy because like- That's crazy. Even on top of the Myers thing, we'll get into that too. But that was another area that we always used to say, like, it would be cool to build, like. Yeah, my plan was to yeah. build Tyson Towers right there. And they, there they, you got, go. they got there. there, you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, can you talk so, more about that? Yeah. So, uh, we went out. We have a hotel. Mm-hmm. We have a Hyatt Place Hotel. There's not a Hyatt Hotel in this area, mm-hmm. anywhere around. Um, so, th- that's the flag on the hotel. Uh, we're going to have around 8,000 square feet of office space, or not office space, I'm sorry, conf- uh, conference center space, mm. hotels, mm. Um, things that will attract people to wilkes Bear, Yeah. which will allow them to stay in the hotel, which will allow them to, you know, do business, yeah. mm. frequent all the other businesses around mm. the city. You know, so it has, it has like a very positive effect on the economy. Yes. Right. So we had this idea maybe for you, 2019, COVID hit. Mm-hmm. Everything stopped on the project. Mm. Um, What's that like? Like how how did that affect like your mind state on real estate at that time of life? Like how crazy must have that been for something like a project that massive just be halted and honestly to have no idea what life was going to be like going forward. So for me as a minority partner in it, I didn't have much money into it. Oh, okay. So I wasn't concerned about it. Mm. I, so that paused. I just put all my effort into commercial real estate. Okay. And during that time, it was probably the most... It, it's probably the most property I've ever sold in my life. Really? Yeah. During oh well during COVID, it was wow. it was this huge push into uh, the distribution markets. Mm. So everybody wanted to be able to distribute whatever they needed and have you know. Mm-hmm. And we are in a great location. Yeah. You know, between New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, we're like we're in mm. the center hub of it all here. Interesting. Did that affect like pricing at all? Was like the demand higher? So like, were you selling your properties for more money or was it less at the time? So, 
a lot more money. A lot more. The man was interesting. unbelievable. Really, really interesting. Yeah. So, but the downfall with that was uh, the prices, you know, prices shooting up. And you take a forty million dollar project. Yeah, that's now a sixty million dollar project. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to keep all the bells and whistles you had, right? Yeah. So now we went through the process of uh, value engineering. So it's basically here's all your drawings. Now we got to tone it back a little bit, mm. bring it within budget mm. that we could afford. The project's only good if you could pay your debt on it. Yeah. You know, and make some money in the yeah. end. And, you know, not lose your house. That's the underwriting process, that's right? That's the underwriting yeah. process, yeah. That's where I'm at in my journey of financial literacy in regards to real estate is trying to learn how to underwrite so that deals actually make sense. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. still learning on all those. I'm still learning those specific numbers. Yeah. Um, but, like, it's always just have experts around you. Yeah. yeah. Like, know what you were saying? Like, you don't understand a lot of those words. Yeah. Well, yeah. we got a hotel consultant that yeah. explained all that to us, Interesting. you know? Yeah, that's what Rob Kiyosaki talks about, man. Like, you have to have people around you that are smarter than you and yes. more knowledgeable than you. I actually remember a while ago, maybe about three years ago, I was in this house, and the house was vacant for, like, two years. And um, I didn't have really a place to stay at the time. Like, I was kind of in and out of apartments and stuff like that. Actually, I was staying at an apartment down the road from here. My lease was up. They wanted to bump the rent up, like, three or $400, and I was like, can't do that. So then I came and stayed here, communicated with the owner a little bit. Long story short, I convinced her to sell it to me. And then I was asking you, or I think before that, I called you and I was like, hey, man, I want to try to buy this property. Like, what do I need to do? And I think you told me that the first thing I need to do from this lady to get the process rolling was to get a sales agreement. And I think that's how it happened. And that's an example of like having somebody around you that's more knowledgeable than you yeah. to kind of guide you in the right direction. Yeah. Right. And, and that's here I am. keeping I own your it. contacts too. I, I own that. That is now. crazy to think yeah. about now. Six fast forward. Basketball coach. Let me call yeah. him up about yeah. this house. Like what are the odds? He, 10 years later. Yeah. 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 And now I own the house. Now we're doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Now. Crazy, right? That is nuts how that works. It is crazy. And I really thought about it like that, but, but that's another thing I wanted to think about too. Um, so you would say that primarily your game is commercial real estate then. Sure. Right. So how does that affect or how does COVID affect your game when commercial real estate is no longer really, or at least I'm hearing, it's there's not really a big demand for it because a lot of companies are allowing their workers to work at home and they don't really need that commercial space to work. Yeah, so there's different aspects of commercial. Okay. Yeah. It's not just office space. Okay. It's not just retail. Mm-hmm. It's also these huge distribution warehouses. Yes, right. Which is what it's you were referring to. these huge 100,000 square foot buildings yeah. that are they're making parts for engines or whatever. Right? Yeah. You know, so those are the things where the value increased significantly. Office space during COVID, you you couldn't give it away. Right. Interesting. But there's also, like like you're saying, there's other avenues within the umbrella of commercial real estate that also exists. That's interesting, too, because you know who I'd like to talk to? You know who I bet has some solid information that, uh, who's that guy? Is it Miracle? Rob oh, Miracle, yeah, 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 Rob Miracle. He's really big into the commercial game. Myers too, High School right? graduate. Yeah. yeah. You know him? Yeah. My yeah. father actually worked for him. Really? Yeah. So I heard his story, which is pretty interesting. He went and did class with Del Grotto as well. And uh, Larry's like John Donahue. Like, yo, this Larry's the man. <laughs> Seriously. I'm trying so hard to get him on the podcast. He makes but, a four-hour lesson yeah. go by so fast. Yeah. Well, it He's seems like best. all the craziest real estate guys I've ever heard of in this area, they all got taught by this one guy. But why have I never heard anything too crazy about, like, his story? Like, that guy. Larry? He'd be a great guy to talk to. Yeah. He has a hell yeah, of a we've story. Tried. I'm trying, man. Um, I don't know how I was, t- I was going about this, but I think the story was that Miracle was in Larry's class, and... Larry was given a lesson, and I think he said something along the lines of, you don't need a license to open a brokerage. Is that true? That is true. Is that correct? And so I think Miracle raised his hand to try to clarify what he just said, and he was like, yeah, technically it is true. You don't need a license to open a brokerage. And so the story goes, Miracle closed his book, got up, left the class, and then went to start his empire. Wow. Probably yeah. partnered with a broker. Yeah, probably partnered with a broker yep. and, then, and then made the whole thing happen. There's another story it's about like a him beanie too. baby truck. Yes. Or not beanie baby. I'm sorry. It cabbage was cabbage patch. patch. Yeah. yeah. There's another sorry, story about that. Wait, what? Go, go ahead. Another story about that. So I guess one of his first businesses and how he originally raised capital was he he saw a demand for these cabbage patch kids, and so he somehow managed to get an order of them in bulk. And I think from how the story goes, he what? sold them at the Bloomsburg Fair and made like forty five thousand dollars. That's how he bought days. his first commercial property. Wow, on that's Beekman crazy. Street. Yep. That's where Head Start is now. Boom. That was right his first Myers, right? Yeah. I mean, Boom. you hear about crazy entrepreneurial stories like that all the time today, but like when I hear about them, 
like taking place like way back in a day like that that's always blows yeah. my mind that, like people were that ahead of the curve for like he's dude he's got a monopoly oh yeah yeah well i mean you see his signs literally everywhere yeah. like you just drive around wooksby every 10 minutes you'll probably see a rob miracle sign in front of some building somewhere yeah. how Crazy. old is that guy now i don't know I don't I'm know. Not he's anybody's age out there. Yeah. He's like know. a man in the shadows. Uh, yeah. huh? I would say he's in his sixties, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Got that's interesting. An empire. So now, what is the next step with that building on the corner lot by the square that we were talking about? So we're we're, we're still moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, we have it cut down. We're like around the still around the forty million dollar project. Yeah, uh, we're building a a parking garage also with it, and you don't really think much of about a parking garage. Um, but they're expensive. Would that be like $16,000 of space? Really? Yeah, wow. Crazy. Would that be like behind? Yeah, it'll be the... hidden behind it. Okay, because that seems like a very, it's like, in terms of the other building, the apartment building next to it, it has a lot of like vertical space going yeah, backwards. It goes all like, the way to South Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, cool. so you would do like the building and then the parking garage behind that. Is there also still a lot of space behind that other, like the diamond building as well? There won't be. There won't be okay. parking. They're doing parking lots back there, right? Yeah. yeah. There's still like those parking lots are very under underdeveloped. I'm, I'm yeah. imagining somebody's going to probably. That's pay all that part of that project. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah very interesting, man. Um, and I got to ask, like, do got do people just have forty million bucks to throw at a project like that, or, or are they just kind of creatively coming up with this financing and to, this is, to make it this happen? This is where like the experience of working in government in the past comes yeah, in, right? right? And doing other projects, we. The city of Wilkes-Barre, we're, we're considered a third-class city. First-class cities in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. I believe second-class city is Harrisburg and Scranton. Mm -hmm. and the rest are all third-class cities. What does that mean? Yeah, I was, yeah. It's just this, our sizes, levels okay. of government, okay. I see. Um, and all that, right? Uh -huh. So if somebody's looking for a project, you're obviously looking for the bigger cities. Yeah. Third, we're a third-class city. We don't make the kind of money. We don't generate the kind of money in Wilkes-Barre to fully support a $40 million project. I see. So you're looking for subsidies. Okay. So, you know, we reached out to the state. We're working with the state, our legislators for state grants. We're working with the mayor for state grants. Um, everybody's been great. Everybody's been great, but it's yeah. just a matter of getting people to understand that um, it might be a $40 million project. Uh, you can't finance $40 million. You can't make that payment every month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got to, you got to, leverage leverage mm -hmm. it with state grants or um other avenues of revenue yeah but i know uh, you're very interesting i know you're very community based with like your projects but have you ever thought about traveling elsewhere and trying this somewhere else yeah 100 percent. but I'm, I'm grounded here until my mm. kids are all out of school build the city man yeah i'm advocating I, for it build so, the city oh i'm all about yeah. i i love it here um so what's the game plan then after the kids are out like would uh, you, hopefully would you be like stay? a snowbird you know so ah, when it's cold, I'll yeah. go, you know, go down south. That's yeah. like, that's always been our dream. My yeah. wife and my dream. Very yeah. cool. Shout Where? Out Ms. Yeah. Shout out Miss uh, Miss Baruch. There you go. Yeah. yeah. She was my teacher. Yeah. Was she was sixth grade teacher. Sixth grade. Yeah. yeah. yeah she was mine too. <laughs> yeah. No, mine that's too. crazy. What about, so what is the, into a different project, what is the situation with Myers? I'm sure a lot of people watching as well as us Gotta are very interested it. in know. Man, let's get into it. Ask yeah. like what's going on there because. I want to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I want to buy Myers. <laughs> How cool would that be, man? Yeah. That would be the biggest cool. flex of 2023, like, dude. Like we were talking about with that corner lot too. That was another thing we <laughs> always used to say is like we were going to blow this up and we were going to find a way to buy Myers High School somehow. That yeah. was like a, a big inside thing between he and, uh, yeah, he and I. So What's the deal with Myers High School? What's going on with that? Ready? So I think it's going to be in front of zoning uh, next month. Actually, this month, mm. mid-October, two weeks. And what does that mean? So it was a school. In order for it to become a residential uh, building, you have to go in front of the city government, in okay. front of a zoning hearing board. Yeah. You got to change the use classification mm. Okay. Uh, into multifamily. So what his goal is right now is I think it's like 120 apartments, one oh and two bedroom gosh. apartments. Wait, did so somebody own it? He's going through the process. Uh, getting the zoning pass is one of the conditions to of the acquisition. So it, can, it could not go through if, like, the zoning yeah. does. Okay, that makes Interesting. sense. Interesting. And wow. do you know, like, what the idea is in terms of, like, 
what he, the vision is for the renovation? Like, do they plan to keep it anywhere near the same? Like, in terms of, like, say, the classrooms, how they used to be? Or, like, would it be a complete overhaul renovation? Like, do you know anything? I think the size of the apartments are going to be close to the size of the rooms, the wow. classrooms. That's awesome. You know, so then along the, like, where the turf is, you're going to yeah. have the bigger classrooms where the shops, you know, yeah. all yeah, were, yeah, yeah. the print shop and all that. So what do you do about that then? Like, what do you do... I guess more specifically about like the football field and the stadium. Being there. Like, what do you do about that? <laughs> Turns into a parking lot. Oh, Nobody man, wants sucks. to hear that. Yeah, it's that. terrible. Yeah. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. But when you go back and think about it and put everything in the perspective, yeah. um, you're going to have around a hundred people living in there. Zoning requirement is one and a half cars per apartment. Mm -hmm. You need to justify. And there's nowhere on that site. Oh no, you, you know, can. Where you're parking two, three hundred cars. Yeah, we were parking all the way down the street, and we were going to school there. And then to make it even worse, we're, yeah, like on that side street. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Getting tickets and stuff, yep. parking in the the yeah. dentist parking lot. Yeah, so, like, like we, the thought was his original thought. He wanted to keep the turf. He was going to keep the gym. He was going to yeah. keep the pool, the athletic facility downstairs. Oh my god. Um, the the holdback to him was, if they were going to do shows or events and had an event on. At the stadium, yeah, they'd have to justify parking. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you never get through zoning without all these crazy rules and mm -hmm. exemptions. And he just, you know, yeah, it's costing him money. Yeah, you know, to do all this planning, and he just figured, you know what, I'm just going to keep it this way. He's going to try and do some community space in the uh, auditorium. Oh, nice. Who is this guy? Mystery Batman. Can you, can you talk a little bit about him at all or not? I mean, he's he's an investor, young yeah. guy out of Brooklyn. He made his money in Brooklyn, New York. Doing what? Wow. Real estate in Brooklyn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Young guy. That's crazy, man. I, honest to God, the the amount of money that people come to our area with. Yeah. Like it's mind blowing. Yeah. Well, like, I just got to drive around the area and see some of these homes, like like in the back mountain. You're yeah. Like, wow. What did these people do for a living? I didn't know there was jobs like this. There yeah. are jobs like it. Well, that's like, that's what my Myers, Myers is listed for 4.4 4 million or very close to it. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, you're required by law. And this is another thing I, you know, you're learning on the job to sell a government property mm -hmm. that's owned by the taxpayers. You actually have to, um, you have to get an appraisal, figure oh, out what the okay. value of the property is. And then you have to list it for sale. Mm. Um, and then once you come to an agreement, you have to go in front of a judge in the county court and say, this is the best offer we got and yeah. you need to justify it. Interesting. So it's not, yeah, it was wild. This not simple. It, it, no, a lot of, no, a lot of moving parts. That That's that. commercial real estate is you hurry up, you get the deal and then you wait. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've had Myers under for like three years. You know, it's funny, actually. It's crazy. I worked at Myers. Uh, my fir you, my first job in the district was working at Myers yeah. as a janitor. And I remember watching you give guys tours yep. and like wondering myself, like, what is he doing here? And, you know, lo and behold, you were showing a guy a property to potentially yeah. buy it. Is that right? That's it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's so crazy to think. Yeah. About that was that. a crazy yeah. one. That went from $2 million yeah. that the school board was voting on yeah. to, I was at my, my great niece's birthday party in Florida, mm -hmm. seven, six o'clock at night. Yeah. My phone starts ringing. It's the other agent that lost out on the bid. And he said, my client wants to offer a hundred thousand over. Right. So I, I, we had to interrupt the school board meeting <laughs> and yeah. I'm telling the solicitor, like, listen, like, I know this isn't normally how we do it, but a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> of taxpayer money is a hundred thousand yeah, dollars. Right. Yeah. Ended up having, they had to go in the recess because they started having a bidding war. Oh my God. Incre increase the price close to a million dollars in 20 minutes. That's what I was going to ask before, because when I initially heard what the value of Myers was initially being sold for, it was only like 2.5. Yeah. I remember so that's how it was something close I to mean, that. So again, goes back to what we were talking about, the economic development, getting that tax yeah. base going. I think the school district, if somebody had the right vision there, yeah, they probably would have, they probably would have given the property to somebody hope that they put $20 million in and yeah. get that property on the tax rules because yeah. that's ultimately, you know, what yeah. it's all about. They should give it to the co Podcast. That's what There's I'm saying. No, um, I know we both went to school there and we're counted out. No, but <laughs> so, so here's my question though. So, so what are this, what is this guy's intentions for when he um, officially makes the acquisition of the property? Who's he going to be renting to? Because I feel like if he's renting to guys, if it's just like a, like what type of project is it going to be? Because I feel like depending on how that play or that plays out, that could really have a, a large effect on the community of South Wilkes-Barre, right? Yeah. So if it's like if it's like Section 8 houses, 
that might not be good for the city, right? So, so how do you think that he would go about it, or do you know anything so like about that? So he he's going more on the higher end. Yeah, mm. um, he's going on the higher end on the housing and the finishes, like the marble finishes. Like I saw some. I wish I I should have brought some of these pictures. That'd with be cool. Me. It was wild. I'll 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 share them with you guys later. Yeah. yeah. Um, incredible. Mm-hmm. And he wants to keep the athletic facility going. He wants to keep the gym there. Yeah. The cafeteria. He wants to turn into a business center. That's awesome. That so, really cool. you know, this whole live work mentality, mm-hmm. you don't have to go in office, but you could have a, yeah. you know, a pot over here in the cafeteria. Yeah. That would be so cool. It'd be cool to live at something like that. Like imagine living in a complex where you can go to the gym and you can go to yeah. your business and you can go. He's going to bring the gym back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's going to cool. redo that whole lower level. Yeah. Uh, he's going to bring the swimming pool back. That's yeah. awesome. Was Very that swimming cool. pool active when you guys were there? No. Well, there's two of them. Oh, no. no it was no. Kistler. Kistler. They were swimming Kistler. Yeah, you're right. There right. used to be two pools in Myers. Yeah, they're both. They were both pool closed. And a pink pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a male pool and a female pool. Well, you know downstairs, like where the gym is, you go out in that hallway. We had the turf. It was like those two, the mm-hmm. left and right at the end of the hallway. Mm-hmm. That's so like where they were. The one swimming pool is now where the athletic facility, is, the weight room is. Right. They yeah. built over that. Yeah. If you, oh, there's still so tiles. Remember, you know how there's still tiles like on blue. that? Was that the yeah. 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 It was connected to it, like where, like our little locker. Yep. John was on yep. the side. That's where it yeah. was. Yeah, man. That's a, that's extremely so interesting. It's a good thing. I mean, he's trying. Yeah. He's yeah. focusing on getting you know professionals yeah. whether young or older in their life and and even like people like I keep thinking of my parents they're they're in their 70s and they're still in the house that they raised their three kids yeah in. Hmm. they're about ready to downsize but they aren't ready to you know really yeah. make a, a big transition mm-hmm. this this will be perfect for people like them also that's really cool it is that was always my biggest hope for that building is that something came of it other than it just being demolished and being left vacant because that's something i mean he and i go on walks from time to time like just talk about things and that's what i always used to say passing myers is like it sucks because you went to Myers. Uh, four generations of my yeah. family graduated there. So, like, I'm sure you probably have felt yeah. the same experience, but like me going from being one of the very last classes to ever like exit those halls and then walking past it and seeing it now, I used to always say it sucks how much life that school used to have and how much like emotions, feelings, memories were all like sculpted in one place. And now it's just like a ghost building. It's just like. It's a shell of what it used to yeah. be. That but always sucked. We'll yeah. experience in a stage of building, man. I think there's yeah. a lot of stuff that's going to happen in the coming years that's going to yeah. change the, the, the at, like the atmosphere mm. in Wilkesbury. That's yeah. why we got to like get more proactive of like what we could do in terms of events. Because that was another thing I wanted to bring up to you was, I feel like that's something our city really lacks that I hope we can figure out going forward in the future is how we can make people have a better time while they're here. Cause something I was just voicing right. to him prior to starting this pod, uh, before you even got here was I feel like most people, obviously, you know, a lot of hotels are popping up in our city. And I feel like some of the main draw to our city for most people is either the Mohegan sun arena or the Mohegan sun casino, both of those things. So I feel like we need more than just those two things, to like really pull people in and to keep them here. Yeah. And I don't know what it would be. You know, it's wild. All those hotels up off of like by Walmart yeah. in that area there, mm-hmm. all those new hotels. Yeah. They sit at seventy percent occupancy. People live in there? No, they're they're using them. People are rent you know, they're getting seventy oh, yeah. percent of every one of those rooms are occupied at night. Wow. wow. That's those are crazy. crazy numbers, yeah, especially it is. we had zero. That's really interesting. How much of that do you think well, again, I don't even know if this is true, but I would imagine we had to have had a massive influx of people migrating to Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania after COVID from like New York and New Jersey. So how many, is it even like, is that public knowledge yet? How much more people live in PA now than there did say two years ago, two and a half years ago? PA or Wilkes-Barre? Just, oh yeah, Wilkes-Barre in general, I guess. Yeah, I think I told you that I read a few, like not a few years ago, but I don't know what decade it was, but there was around 50,000 people was the peak of the occupants of Wilkes-Barre. And, and what now, is it now? Like 35? Like 15,000, something like we that. We were oh. down to like 42,000, maybe early 2000s. Yeah. Um, and then it went down even more. Mm. Um, I have a feeling, though, if they did a new census, which I'm sure is coming soon, yeah. uh, the numbers will show an increase. Mm. But I definitely think like we need something here that'll keep people longer than just visiting or to just pop yeah. in and out for business. Do we say that because we're spoiled, you think? And I know that sounds weird, mm-hmm. like we're spoiled in Wilkesburg, but you have these people moving here from New York, yeah. New Jersey, right? And they're spending three thousand dollars a month in a single yeah. one bedroom apartment. And now they get this three bedroom, two bath house with yeah. a yard and they're in love with this area. Yeah. 
Maybe the problem is, is like I'm young and like I'm looking for a more fun experience. This seems like a great place that if you were like 30, 40 years old, you're just starting your family. Like this seems like it's not a bad spot to move to and to just live your life normally. But I guess for like what I'm trying to do with my life and like. It's a good place to raise kids. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, definitely certain areas, but I guess like. When I, I always try to compare Wilkes-Barre to, like, some of the biggest, like, most fun cities, like Dallas or Austin mm-hmm. or, like, where, where we just were coming from and, like, stuff like that. I try to compare it to that, and I guess in a way that's not really fair because different areas are kind of meant for different things. Those are, like, very nightlife-centric. It's very, like, event-based with the community. It's bringing a lot of people in because of the events and stuff. This seems like it might just be an area to just live your life, and maybe that's where I'm wrong. So I don't know. Yeah. It is interesting. There are a lot of events, man. Mm. There's so many different websites that show different mm. events going on in the city of Wilkes-Barre. Yeah. Um, it's all the time. There are yeah. always things happening. You're just trying to find, your, you know, what you like. Yeah. yeah. And putting yourself out there and go yes. out there and do it, right? Yeah. That's a good point. Because that, in many ways, I don't. Like, in many ways, I, I kind of am off the grid in that, that aspect guilty. a little bit. Yeah. I got to ask. So, when I was in, uh, when I was taking my real estate classes, I was under the impression that once you become a realtor and you help somebody to buy a house or you sell a house, you make 3% of the commission, right? Isn't that generally how it works? Or it's like 6%, you split it, split it with the brokerage and then you get, how does that work? So we'll just use basic, sorry, basic right. numbers, right? Yeah. Uh, your average commission on real estate is 6%. Okay. Sell a $100,000 house, you get $6,000. Yep. You get a check for $6,000 that goes to your broker. Yep. You have a predetermined amount of split. Mm -hmm. Some brokers, you know, 80, 20, 70, 30, 50, 50. uh, And it could change. You could be on a building scale. Yeah. Where, you know, if you sell a million dollars of property, you're getting 50%. But if you go up to 2 million, you're hitting 60, 70% commissions. So that was what I wanted to get into. Like you sell Myers High School for $4.4 million. Like (laughs) what's that check look like? (laughs) Not what you think. Really? Yeah, there's three other agents involved, two oh, other agents involved, right? right? So now, You're splitting the pie a little bit more, right? So, right. Yeah. It's 100%. Yeah. And then the brokerage takes their cut. And, yeah. you know, when you watch those shows yeah. on, on TV People and you're like, like, million bucks. Four and, million dollars yeah. commission, you're like, bullshit. You know, yeah. you're getting half of that and lucky if you're even getting half of that. Yeah. Well, what's the what's the threshold for like what you're being paid versus the amount of work you're putting in? Like, I would imagine you feel as though you probably get paid fairly for the amount of work that you're doing, right? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And and with any career, right? You you got to love your job. I love my job. Yeah, I love the fact that I could stay home sometimes. Yeah, and yeah. just work on my phone. Like today, beautiful day out. Yeah, I was on my my back porch watching. I had the laptop out. Mm. I was making phone calls, just doing my thing. It's Love it. Yeah. Love it. So do you have in any way, this is something I like to ask a lot of people who are like, I don't know, uh, getting, I, I don't want to, I'm not calling you old or anything, but getting closer to having to figure this out. What's your like five to 10 year plan in that game? Or do you have like an exit strategy or like what you want to do going forward? I'm going to keep growing. Just keep growing? I just want to keep growing, growing the business. I want to, um, like I said, our ultimate goal is to have an investment down south Mm. um and i just want to be able to enjoy life right real estate something yeah you you don't have to do from one location yeah i could be sitting on a beach somewhere and doing deals yeah you know that's my ultimate goal you think like that would be my ultimate well that's good and how easy do you think that would be to obtain because it seems like you're already doing a good enough job at it we're getting there we're getting there 10 years i'll be there Ah. right i always base it off of uh we have six kids our youngest right now is 11 yeah so he's got, he's in sixth grade, six more years mm. till he's off. And then we can start experiencing things. That's pretty cool. Like, is that something you really look forward to? Like, is that like a, or is that like an aspect of life that like almost scares you in a way? I'd imagine you never really were in a position like that since you were really young where you didn't have like really young kids to worry about or. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like as a parent, I know that sounds horrible, right? But as a parent, no, I, get, I right, get what you mean. You're thinking about what's for dinner. What do yeah, I got to make up right. for lunch? Where do the kids have to go today? What practice? Yeah. Where do I have to coach? It's exhausting, man. Yeah. And I always think, like, if I could put 
just a little bit of that time yeah. into more work, mm. how much more you could accomplish. Oh, yeah. Imagine it's how wild. much you'd be so, killing yeah. it if you just had a, a couple extra hours of the day to just <clears throat> be able to focus on yourself. Just straight focus on something with yeah. no interaction. You know, it's that it's that crazy <laughs> balance. Yeah, yeah. It's like we always talk about how busy like our lives get. Imagine having a little daring oh running around. No, heck no. <laughs> so, so my question is then, so like what would your advice be as a wiser person to young men like me and Kevin and also a bunch of guys listening who want to create wealth for themselves and don't have a bunch of rooted responsibilities yet? Like I don't have any kids. I don't have, you know, really deep responsibilities that I have to attend to. I'm still a bit free in a lot of ways. Like my game has a lot of opportunities still in a lot of ways. Right. Right. There's a like, lot of moves I can make on my board still, yeah. you know, whereas I think when you get older and you acquire more responsibilities, those moves kind of tighten up. A yeah, bit, very right? much so. So what, 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 what would your advice be to young men like us and also young men who are listening? Yeah, 100%. It's to take risks. Don't be afraid to take a risk. Mm. But if you're going to do it, make it an educated risk. Yeah. Right. Heck Don't go yeah. so far out on a limb that, you know, you're worried about where you're going to be sleeping in a week. Yeah. yeah. True. Um, you know, you get to a point where you know what you're making every month. You know what your responsibilities are. You know what you need to make. Mm. Set aside some of that other money that you aren't, you know, if you're spending at a bar or whatever. Yeah. Don't spend that at a bar. Make an investment in something. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard, so <clears throat> you got some younger cats, younger kids. Uh, have you ever heard of a term, Matrix, The Matrix? Have you the ever term, The Matrix. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of the word, The Matrix. Not the movie. But, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm stuck in The Matrix. No, escaping have, the matrix. Have maybe? you ever heard of the rat race? How do you interpret the rat race? And do you think you beat the rat race? No, no, you didn't really? I don't think you ever beat the rat race, man. Really? It's really? Always. You're always competing and going against people. Yeah. And- so there's a, there's a game that rich dad, poor dad book. There's a game that the author of that book created. His name is Robert Kiyosaki. He created a game called rat race. And so the idea of the game is like you get a card and you're given an occupation and then on the occup, I'm going to try my best to explain how this is. And please try. Yeah, me. if you can. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember it pretty vividly. So you get a card and it's an occupation. So say you get doctor. Doctor, right? So the doctors are generally paid a lot more. Yes. But they have a lot more debt liabilities or debt yeah. that they have to pay each month, right? And so in the rat race, you're in this wheel of like you roll dice, you spin around the wheel, you collect a check, collect a check, collect a check. You might have a kid. You might land on. Have a baby. They call it doodads, yeah, right? So. No, the kid isn't a doodad. That's a. Oh, yeah, the kid is just, yeah. yeah, that's just his own. Uh, so with having a kid, like, your expenses go up more. And so the object of the game is to take risks, take on debt, and try to achieve enough passive income to balance out your monthly expenses. So you have to acquire enough assets to where your monthly expenses is covered by your passive income. Well, isn't it? Isn't it like a threshold though? Because it wouldn't be so. Say like I have roughly a thousand dollars a month in debt. You wouldn't want to just make a thousand. Oh no, it'd, it'd be from passive income. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah. So, so so passively, yes. you want to do that passively to right. equal out your debt, and then yeah. in theory, that's just by debt you mean cash flow. expenses. That's yeah, what, that's what we're talking about. But expenses. listen, real life. Yeah, as soon as you think you have it figured out, yeah, it just throws. You know, yeah. you get another. Just has its way of. Uh, yeah bringing you back down the reality. Well, yeah. One thing they don't really account for in that game is like what the idea we always talk about of like your lifestyle influx, like how much more money you're going to end up spending because you're making so much more. Money. Right. You're going to be, it, 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 it's all, it's so true. I've experienced so that as well. True, right. You're yeah. doing really well. You're making money. Oh, I may I'll do Uber eats tonight. Yeah. yeah. Dude, right. You start spending the next yep. 20, $30 mm-hmm. on a meal. You don't think about it, but yeah. that's that passive income yeah. you're thrown away. Yeah. That's what I was, right? ju- I was just telling him that like, I, I used to not be able to justify like the daily coffee, like purchasing like a coffee in the morning. I used to not justify that every day, but since I just, my pay literally doubled overnight, basically now I've like, I kind of put it in my brain that like, Oh, I can afford that coffee now. So it's like, now I don't really look at it the same way I used to, right. even right. though well, it's not. You still need to be able to enjoy your life. Yeah. True. Right? The balance. You, you, yeah. It's that whole balance. Yeah. Um, I definitely experienced that. So when I bought this house, I came up with the idea of like asking two of my really good friends if they wanted to move in with me and rent a room. And so I started to collect rent every month and I'm like, oh shit, like I'm making some extra <laughs> money every month. Yeah. Like, and right. so I wasn't. I wasn't properly accounting for it. I was just like, yo, extra money. Yeah. Let's go do something fun. <laughs> yeah. And now I have nothing really to show for it. So now going forward, I'm going to try to have a bit of a better strategy for managing that and like, yeah. you know, allocating that towards specific purposes and possibly like 
um, unexpected expenses. Like the other day, I just got a plumbing issue out of the blue, and I had to pay like 340 bucks. And if I had my account set up, I'd be good. But instead, yeah. I had to pay that 30, 3 or 40 and I was all messed up <laughs> about it. So <laughs> That's the name of the young game, bro. You're We're you figuring it out. Um, with that being said, I think, I mean, if this was an iPhone, there's a million tabs open. So we kind of went yeah. you know, all over a bunch of different topics. But I think it was an incredibly valuable conversation. Yeah. I think that I could sit here and ask you questions for another five hours. If you know, if, no, uh, Great conversation. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So guys. I, I hope that we can continue this in the future. I can continue to ask you questions. And maybe one day, you know, once you develop that, that project that you guys are working on, you can come back on the podcast. We could talk more about oh, it. Oh, yeah. Stuff Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. Not only that, but we got to find you a home. Yeah, that's what we were right? just going to yes. say. Yeah, you gotta help right? us find I got some great locations for you guys. We use a Spark program, yeah. set you up for a year. Yeah. Hmm. Wait, actually, one more, one more second. I, I wanted to, I wanted to go back to that before, and I completely forgot about it. So I know not only are we interested in the Spark program, we also talk about the Spark program very frequently. I know a lot of people that are interested in it as well, but also our good friend Colin back here, and then our other friend Brian, that's not currently here right now. They know he Brian. lives here. Brian lives here. They were both. And obviously you can chime in, ask your own question if you want to, but they were both interested into how that specifically worked. And I obviously didn't have the answers for it. Um, It was something he and I toyed with a long time ago, but uh, I was wondering if you can explain that to the people of Wilkesbury that are interested in maybe getting an entrepreneurship, starting their own business, but more specifically our friends that are also very curious about it as well. Spark program? Yeah, sure. So it's either for a brand new business or from a business moving out of another neighborhood yeah. community into Wilkes-Barre. Uh, and it, I, I forget the exact dollar amount, mm. um, but they require you to sign a three-year lease okay, with mm. the hopes of first year, they're going to get you up and started. Yeah. And then, you know, you slowly build into your okay. second and third year. That makes sense. Because uh, Yeah. The rents get paid directly to the landlord. Wow. Okay. Um, so it really gives like an entrepreneur a lot of room. stress. For, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Room for Foot in the door and room to grow. And yeah. have a plan. Like, he gives them a whole year to plan. To like, you. how am I going to, you know, figure this out? Because it's really just a game of income and expenses, right? Sure. I mean, at least, at least covering your ass, like, and having your place set up. Yeah. yeah. But that uh, that three-year lease, I guess that was, like, the main th- gray area that, like, we didn't really have yeah. an understanding on. We didn't yeah. know how long the actual time frame I was. I believe so. it's three years. Okay. Well, that's good. And, obviously, if you guys want to do any more independent research. I can research, get you all the information you guys need. Yeah. I also, no. think, I also think, from what I talked about with uh, Mayor Brown, I think the cap is, like, $10,000 a year. Is that right? Do you know it anything be. about that? Okay. It could be, and there could also be special exa- – like, if you're going to go to the mayor and say, Mayor, I got this company. They want 100 new jobs. And yeah. All 100,000. There might be a chance he could yeah. live that. Yeah. The yeah. chamber. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I understand. But if it's just like – $10,000 goes a long way heck yeah. to, oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. a startup business. Heck, yeah. Yeah. So – yeah, no, I was just going to say, so yeah, we definitely got to talk more off camera. There's also a bunch of things that we were talking about earlier that we didn't really get into that we can also talk about more off camera. But oh. yeah, you definitely got to help us find a podcast, warehouse, studio, home, wherever. Easy enough. Um, I think one thing that I wanted to ask you, last question, would you ever buy real estate on Mars? <laughs> I buy it on Mars. Yeah. If they started selling real estate on Mars and it was for the low, would you buy in? Would you buy low? Absolutely, I buy low. <laughs> ah, that's the risk. Sick. That's the fuck yeah, dude. I and love it. You have to. <laughs> also, piggybacking off that, you just made me realize the other thing I was talking about. Did you ever uh, hear about like the crazy shit that was going on like two years ago where people were buying virtual oh, real estate and right. like the metaverse? What do you think of that? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> no? <laughs> it uh, makes sense. That's me right out, right? Yeah. Where's, the, yeah. where's the real estate agent in that transaction? Well, no, I, I feel like they... You can figure it out. Somehow. I don't think they'll ever cut you out. I think that was a fuck, That was a shot in the dark, in my opinion, yeah. going for that. But, I mean, I've heard of people spending like $300,000 on plots of land in the metaverse, which is kind of mind-blowing. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, love the, I love the internet, and I am a big <laughs> tech guy, but I just I don't see the value in it. I figured I had to bring it up, though. But Greg, where can the people at home watching this podcast, where can they find you? Do you want to give out any of your socials or more specifically like where they can reach out to you? If they wanted to work with you, if they wanted yeah, to do Yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, so I'm the director of commercial real estate at Lewis and Freeman Real Estate. Mm. Um, I'll give you my card. Okay. You guys can have. You yeah. can show it up here. Um, but don't be afraid to call me. You'll find my son, my name, number on signs. Mm. Call me. Even if you just have a question on real estate. Yeah. Call them. There you go. And yeah, Man we'll make myth. sure to have it, everything linked down in the description below so you can just go down there, figure it out for yourself. It's pretty simple. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, subscribe, share with a friend. Yeah, guys, another one down. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace. Peace. <laughs> awesome.